Hi, this is Mark from Groupable, and today I'm going to be covering two things in this video. One is how we enter a new person into your local group, and then how you progress them through the membership life cycle for your organization. I'm going to be using the example of a Masonic Lodge. Masonic Lodge has kind of a three-stage process to becoming a member. We're going to run someone right through that process. Then we're going to do a couple things like have them resign or what they called a demit, then get restored to membership and just show you how that works. So I'm logged in as a secretary right now. And on my members and others panel, I'm going to go to the menu and go to add a new member slash person. And everybody in Groupable just starts as a record, a person, a contact that's in your local group. That's how everyone starts. So we're just going to put in a John Doe here. And I said it's a gender to male. We're going to give him a birth date of like 1 1 1970. We'll say he's born in Detroit, Michigan. And he is a finance person. And he is going to be added to my local group, which has, happens to be Silva 216. And we do need to have an address for most of our organizations, require a physical address. And most of them, let's see, select my country here, I'll get my states now. And most of them also require a, at least a phone number or a cell phone number. So now I'm going to click the add button and that's going to add him. I'm not going to save this there. And that adds him into my local group. And you'll notice that he is just a contact and he's active. And that is the starting point for this person to become a member of your group. Now to make him a member, he has to go through certain things on his life cycle. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in his first event, which we're going to make that the red event, meaning that we actually read a petition for membership from this member to become a member of a local group. I'm going to backdate this a bit. So I'm going to go back to one, one of, um, see, oh, one, oh, one of 2000. And I'm going to add this into my database here. And you'll see now that makes his status petitioned red at the group level. And at my local level, it makes him petition red. And also, it makes him a candidate. So now he's a candidate to become a member of our organization. And so the next step here is we're probably going to elect him here. He gets elected, and we'll just pretend that that happened on 0201 of 2000. And I can see what the previous events were here. They're listed so that I, I can see that over there. But I'm going to add in that elected event there. And now you see that his status is elected at the group level and at my local level, it's also elected. He's still a candidate. So now that he's been elected to membership, he can actually become a member of my organization. I'm gonna hit the plus sign again and add the next thing. In this case, within the world of Freemasonry, his first thing in the process of becoming an actual member is getting initiated. And we'll just pretend that that happened on 3-1 of 2000. We'll add that in. And what you're going to see here is that event changed his type. Before he was a candidate, now he's an entered apprentice. And he's active at both the group and the local level. Now, the next step he would take is what's called being passed. And it's called passed to the degree of fellowcraft. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to put that passed event in for him. And we're going to put that in on 0401 of 2000. And I am backdating this just for example purposes. I hope you're not 23 years behind on your data entry here. So you're going to go ahead and add that in. And again, this event, again, changes his type. Now he's a fellow craft who's active at the group in the local level. Now I'm going to add in that last event that makes him a full member of my local group. And that's what we call being raised to the degree of Master Mason. And we'll do that on 5-1 of 2000. And we add that in, and now he is a master mason, 
He's active at the group level and active at the local level. And he's also subject to dues now that he is a full member of the local group. So now that he's a full member, there's other things we could do with him. Let's say that he said, you know, I don't want to be a member anymore. Well, in Masonry, that would be called taking a demit. So I just hit the plus sign on the life cycle over there on the timeline. I entered demitted. I put in the date. Let's say he was in for, I don't know, 10 years. And 01 of 2010, he decided he wanted to demit out of the organization. Now you'll see that he's still a master mason because his type hasn't changed, but his status has changed to demitted at the group and demitted at the local level. And let's say that he came back a few years later and said, oh, you know, I want to be active again. So again, timeline, hit the plus sign to add another event. And we're going to see there's probably something like uh, restored here. I've got restored. I can put in the date. Let's say that he came back in 2015. I click add and that brings him back to active status at both the group and the local level. Still a master mason because it doesn't change his type. Okay, so we went through and put this member through a whole lot of things. Now, once we've done that, we have tools in the system for you to actually look at how these things affect the member and what they do when you put in things like a demit, a restored, or the different life cycle events for your member. So I'm going to go down here to the timeline. I'm going to click this box that expands it and makes it big, shows you lots of data. And there's a lot of data here. So we have all of the events, what their date of effect, the date they were recorded, what we call the accounting return period, any, what the description of it is, what local did it, what grand lodge or group that is within what type of event it is there you'll see there's affiliation events member events consolidated in consolidated out a whole bunch of different types but the most important thing here is what member type was applied at the local level and what was the status if you've got some things like member status override and locks member type and some event codes these things are kind of not super important so i'm actually going to go through and use a feature of the ui and simplify this i'm going to turn off the date received the AR period, the event type, the member status override, the locks local member type, and event code columns. And now we're going to look at this and we see that on 1-1 one, one he was red in Silva in the group Fredonia that made him a candidate and made him petition red status. Then on 2 1, he was elected in Silva, Fredonia. It didn't change his type. His type carries through here and it made him elected. Then he was initiated in Silva, Fredonia. That made him an enter apprentice, changed his type. That's the type that we applied to the membership. And it made him active because that's the status that we applied. Then he was passed on 4 1 in Silva, in Fredonia, which made him the member type, fellow craft, and made him status active. Then he was raised in Silva and Fredonia, which made him a master mason and made him active. Then he demitted. And you notice this doesn't have a type because it doesn't change it. It's just changing his status from active to demitted. Then he's restored and it doesn't change his type again. It just makes him active again. And down here at the bottom, this is even more stuff. This gives you a little bit of actual from start date to end date for each group what were they at the group level and group status? At the local level, what was their type and what was their status? And we can see from 1-1 one, one to 2-1, we have an initiating event and it's valid. We know that it was in Fredonia, which is a blue lodge, made him a candidate at the group level and status petitioned red at the group level. And in Silva 216, it made him a candidate and a petition red in that particular local. As you see, you can go through and see all the date ranges for all the different statuses in member types for this member. And this way, at any member, you can say, well, on any given date, in any given group or local, what was their member type and status? And this allows you to see that in detail, everything that's happened to the member and what the effects were. And that's the quick overview of the event system that's built into Groupable that we have here. And Everything on the timeline here 
This is what controls both what a member is and what their status is. Those are the two things it controls. And basically, if you get that in place and it's all accurate, you're going to have an accurate status at the group level, status at the local level, and what their member type is within your organization. Hey, thanks for watching this video about Groupable. If you need support, remember to send an email to support at groupable.com or click the help button in the lower right hand corner. There's lots of articles there. You can also click the contact us button within there and send us an email. And if you're interested in getting Groupable for your organization, let us know at support at groupable.com. We'd be happy to help you.